okay right here we have x of t and the corresponding Fourier transform is x of f we have the sampling as uh, consisting of a uh, impulse train and the Fourier transform is uh, another impulse train in the frequency domain and the resulting sampled signal you can see here is a res uh, comes from multiplying x of t with this impulse train right here okay so what's what's the Fourier transform of this well you can see it consists of multiple spectra of the original signal now this multiplication in the time domain corresponds to a convolution convolution between what between the original signal and this impulse train so when I convolve this with this impulse train in the frequency domain I get multiple spectra of the original signal that's an important concept that you really need to understand whenever you sample a signal like this and you get this right here as x of st you get multiple spectra of the original signal so in summary what we have is the original message and its corresponding Fourier transform a periodic sampling function in this case we'll consider it as an ideal impulse train and we have its corresponding Fourier transform then we have the sampled signal of the original message and we see that the its Fourier transform consists of multiple spectra of the original signal equation wise we saw that it was a convolution between x of f and the periodic pulse train in the frequency domain resulting into multiple spectra of the original signal centered at the sampling frequency and its harmonics what I'd like to point out in this case is that instead of an ideal impulse train we have a periodic pulse train so there's a certain width as compared to an infinitely small width for the impulse train and you can see here instead of the in the frequency domain for this periodic pulse train the heights are not equal but follows the envelope of a sync function okay. whereas we saw in the impulse train the heights are uh, it's equal height okay so instead of these multiple spectrum being of equal height it's convolution between here the original message of in this frequency domain and this uh, impulse uh, set of discrete set of frequencies centered at FS and NFS as before except the heights are different and that's why you have multiple spectra that are not of equal height okay so how do we recover the message from this uh, sampled signal right here okay how do we go from here to here well the only difference is that you have to get rid of these multiple spectra if you want to recover the original signal and the best way to do this is an ideal low pass filter sometimes we want to oversample because what happens if we sample at twice the highest frequency these spectra will spread apart and therefore our stringency or constraints or requirements of the low pass filter is more relaxed instead of this steep filter so that we don't get any of the other multiple spectra we want to get the one here centered at baseband basically so that's how we recover our original message again another illustration of how to recover the message and then the overlap of multiple spectra when we don't sample at twice the highest frequency here we recover the message by low pass ring filter on the spectra centered at the origin and we get rid of the multiple spectra okay so we can see here that fs minus fm implies that fm right here has to be less than if you look at this that must that point must be fs minus fm and then from there you can get 
uh, sampling twice the highest frequency is the criterion if you don't want overlap between this multiple spectra. So as we increase the sampling fre frequency, this spectra starts to spread apart and this filter can be more relaxed. We can go from a higher order to an even lower order. Okay. This is the figure here, 27B, is when we don't sample at twice the highest frequency and we have low frequency effects right here called aliasing.